So my today's topic would be various Kubernetes dashboards. A bit about myself, I've already told. Uh, these are some of the places you can follow me, uh, Twitter, YouTube, uh, join Discord and stuff like that. Cool. So when we talk about Kubernetes, Kubernetes is a complex system. So we all agree on that. And Kubernetes has a level of uh, difficulty where people, especially the developers, they do not want to kind of interact with Kubernetes and they want to kind of keep developing their applications. Uh, now, Kubernetes dashboards can be of two varieties. Uh, one can be that gets installed onto your Kubernetes clusters. One can be that you are installing a client and then you are connecting your cluster via the kubeconfig file. So there are two varieties that you can use it. So when you talk about uh, the use cases, there are various use cases. Uh, Kubernetes dashboard gives you an overview of the clusters and its workloads. That's the first and foremost thing that Kubernetes dashboard gives. It actually gives you the uh, visualization of your cluster. So um, it's helpful for the SRE, it's helpful for the DevOps engineer, it's helpful for the dev uh, developers who wants to get a view of what is actually happening and running in their Kubernetes clusters. Now, on the other side, uh, when you talk about the client side stuff, uh, then also these benefits obviously are the same, but the developers, like they are developing the app, they do not even have to install, uh, you know, uh, anything fancy onto the cluster, do not run any kubectl command, and they can just upload the kubecon file or the token given by their team as a secret or whatever, and then they can uh, get going. And most of the times, it, uh, like, not all the tools, but some of the tools that I'll be discussing today does provide the ability to edit stuff as well. Like uh, you have pods, deployments, replica set, and so on and so forth, all the objects that are deployed onto your cluster. So uh, that's where all the dashboards come in with different, different flavors of different functionalities that they provide. That's where they differ. So like one dashboard will be giving you the, uh, you know, out of the box OIDC um, authentication. One dashboard would be giving you the plugin support. So like this, there are different, different uh, dashboards that give you kind of different features. So it's up to then you to decide uh, as per your use case, like what do you want to use it for? So yeah, it gives you the overview. Then it is helpful for troubleshooting. Yes, um, from the dashboard itself, you'll be able to see all the things. So you don't need to kind of, uh, you know, go to your CLI uh, and have your kubectl and run your kubectl commands and, you know, uh, get all the things step by step. So these dashboards give you the, the workloads with all the necessary information that is actually required to do the first level of troubleshooting. Obviously, increase developer productivity because you don't have to kind of learn uh, a lot of Kubernetes, a lot of kubectl commands. You can kind of skip that and you will be able to directly use these dashboards because uh, when people kind of rely on these, especially, uh, uh, you know, at my time working in the machine learning projects, the machine learning engineers, they, they wanted to see the pods, logs, uh, describe, but they don't want you know, to go into that, like, you know, having the uh, kubeconfig variable set, the kubeconfig file that keeps on rotating, uh, then all that stuff. So they have a dashboard, that's it. And, you know, just do that. Uh, then managing cluster resources. So uh, that's what it does. So the first one that I want to talk about is Octant. Uh, so Octant is a kind of... Um, Kubernetes, it gives you the Kubernetes dashboard view in, in the client side of things. And you can have a resource viewer. So it, there's a lot of things. Like it gives you the web UI instantly. So it's a binary. So you download the Octant binary. So it's a binary that you download. And it immediately exposes the web-based UI for that locally. Uh, now it gives you one interesting thing is the relationship of the objects, which no other gives as smoothly as it does. So it, it it has a resource viewer. So we'll see all these as well. Just want to quickly skim through the, uh, you know, all the features of these, but we'll definitely go through them as well. Then it gives you the summary view, summary of the workloads. Uh, you can actually do a port forward, like you create a pod service and then you can directly do a port forward instead of the typing the command, kubectl port forward and so on and so forth. Uh, so you can directly do with a button click. Logs in exec, get 
they are definitely there and they should be there. Uh, then the label, label filter. So this is great when you have like thousands of objects in the namespace, you can filter them by labels and you can have your own labels. Uh, then you it will be easy for you to uh, do the segregation. Uh, plugins. This is very, very interesting feature in Octant. So there are different plugins that people have developed and you can develop as well. So that Octant has a plugin support and I have given two examples, like they have a Helm plugin, they have a Starboard plugin. Uh, so Starboard is for security scanning, Helm is for like what all Helm stuff is installed on your cluster. So if you download plain Octant and run Octant and you see, you you won't be seeing the Helm and Starboard, Starboard over there, but there's a directory like, uh, you know, home slash config slash Octant and you, uh, in the plugin folder, you uh, download that plugin tar file and put the plugin over there, then you will be able to have those plugins. So I think that is uh, pretty neat. Next one is Schooner. Schooner is uh, a CNC of sandbox, I believe. So it's a CNC of sandbox project. It um, The most interesting feature of Schooner is that it has live metrics, like fast and live metrics. It's very fast, lightweight, responsive UI. What that means is in it has a very good mobile view as well. So if you uh, if you are viewing Schooner in, in your mobile, then also it will give you the you know uh, the very good responsiveness in the mobile asset. No other uh, dashboard would give you that level of responsiveness. Uh, this particular thing is like server side, uh, meaning that it is installed onto your cluster. Like you do kubectl apply onto that cluster, and then this will be installed. Uh, it has the open ID connect available out of the box, so that is some native integration, which is very cool. The next is Headlamp. Um, headlamp is by uh, Ken Volk. Uh, so it is also in cluster, but it also has a desktop version. So you have like kind of both. Um, basic Kubernetes UI, which will be there. And again, it, it has a plugin support, which is uh, which you can customize the UI as per uh, you. Like you don't have to maintain the fork of the repository and do it. So you can actually create plugins and customize stuff according to yourself. That is pretty interesting about this. Again, open ID connect available, uh, clean UI. Um, uh, clean UI, it's, it looks good. <laughs> so it's clean UI. Lens, very famous. And uh, Lens is a desktop application. It's, to be honest, it's heavy, but it provides you then with those features as well. like it, it gives you heavy features it gives you a lot and lot of features that you can do with lens like multi-cluster management is super easy with lens like you can have the like you have the slack uh you know different slack channels so you can have different uh different uh views of the clusters like different clusters as as those boxes which i'll show you uh, it has login with with google lens id and all that stuff um uh, Lens can help you install the metrics. So all the others doesn't have the out of the box metrics installation. But when you talk about Lens, they will let you install like Prometheus operator, cube state metrics, node, uh, daemon set um, using Lens itself onto the cluster. Uh, it also provides like a kind of free and paid pay as you go dev clusters where you can have your dev clusters within Lens itself for easy troubleshooting and all that stuff. So, yeah, that's pretty much about the theory, to be honest. And let's move to the demos. So I have all the demos ready for you, except for this one, which I can, I think I have somewhere the token for this. Let me grab the token. Okay. I'm going to say now's a good chance to ask Sam any questions. Uh, if there is anything uh, so far you wanted to ask about, otherwise uh, just pop them into the Q&A section and uh, we'll get to those at the end of the talks. Yep. Just pop your questions and I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, so this is Kubernetes dashboard, uh, which I haven't talked in the slides, but that is by Kubernetes. So this is in the Kubernetes repository. This is the base dashboard, which is there. Uh, you... Again, this is in cluster. So you have to do a kubectl apply for this to get deployed. So you can see I have 
I have deployed that somewhere here. So yeah, you can see the kubectl apply, the dashboard created. Uh, it has a cluster IP service. You can have a node port and do that. You can have a ingress on top of that, but, but not. Uh, but I have just uh, created another user and token. So it's a token-based authentication or the kube config file. Uh, token is the kind of safer safer thing because you can generate tokens. And it gives you this workload, CPU usage, um, memory usage. These are coming from the metric server. And by default, when you launch a CVO Kubernetes cluster, so all the clusters that I'm showing you are CVO Kubernetes. They are all different clusters. Uh, so when you launch a CVO Kubernetes cluster, you get metric server out of the box, um, like with the default creation of CVO Kubernetes. And from there, this metrics is coming. So it gives you all the view of your, uh, you know, daemon sets, deployments. You can choose the namespaces from here. Uh, you can have, I don't know why this memory usage is, uh, you know, <laughs> wobbling like this. But anyways, so you have the pods uh, which are there. So you can click on the pod. Then you go, it's other details like it's CPU, memory, metadata, and resource information. Um, then the conditions, if there are any controlled by which replica set, and the uh, events, whatever is there. So it will tell you all the stuff, even the security context. Similarly, for services, it tells you uh, what all services are there. You can click on the service. You can edit the service. It gives you the YAML, and it also gives you the JSON view that you can edit and update. Um, I don't think it has a port forward out of the box, but you can definitely go and see the logs um that's very good and you can see let's go back and you can also see the where are the pods yeah so that's kind of pretty much logs and describe yeah so you can do that and you can edit from here as well so you can edit a resource Clicking on the edit button, pretty simple. I think that gives you the exec into the pod. So it gives you a terminal, a shell in the metrics, which is bash or sh. This one is not because it's throwing some kind of error. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can also set the settings of the refresh time, how much time it should be refreshed and all that stuff uh, by default, which namespace should be there. And that's a basic view of Kubernetes dashboard. Uh, moving to Octant. Uh, so this is Octant. And uh, its dashboard is also like you can filter by labels, labels that I was telling you. So like I have uh, the applications. Uh, so this is the overview. So this tells you like deployments in a particular namespace. So you can see I'm right now in the dev namespace. So I'm here. I can see the pods, replica set, config map, secret, service account, event. So that's a kind of summary view. Then I go to the workloads. I can again see the overview. And then I go to deployments. And now if I click on the deployment, I'll be able to see some of the views like summary, metadata, resource viewer. Now this is where I was telling you it gets interesting because that's uh, that's the connection that is shown. Like deployment, this deployment is connected to this replica set. This replica set has created this pod and that is uh, connected to this service account. So you can see all these uh, things which are there. So let's if you if we kind of click on the pod, you can see the pod over here. And actually, this green icon is clickable. That uh, you know that that's something like you might not know, but this green little icon you can go to pods from here also. But you can go to pods from this green little icon as well. It takes you to the pod, and this has a bit uh, more detailed stuff. Like it tells you the apart from the resource viewer, it gives you the YAML file that you can edit. It gives you the logs. Uh, it gives you a terminal inside the container. Now, this vulnerabilities. Now, if you install, so this is the LS inside the exec. Now, if you install Octant right now out of the box, you won't see this vulnerabilities over there because this is the plugin, the starboard plugin that I have installed. And you also will not see these icons like Helm. Uh, you will not see this Helm because this is the plugin that I have installed. So you won't be able to see this. Then uh, in the cluster overview, you can also see, you know, uh, the port forwards and uh, you can actually, I think we, if we go to our resources and services, 
and in maybe in all limb space let's go to maybe cube system if we have any yeah if we have the services over here we can uh, click on that we can do a start port forward so that's where you can do a start port forward on any of the uh, node so and you can again do a stop port forward so that is pretty handy i'll i'll do a port forward demo in lens then uh, yeah that's that's pretty much it that you can do uh, i think it yeah you can also apply the yaml file yeah so that's octant now let's move to schooner so this is schooner and uh, it gives you the kind of fluid like ui and i let me see if i have schooner here as well Cluster. Yeah, it, I don't know if you are able to see me. So if you see me, you can see the schooner is is fluid when you are uh, talking the mobile mobile view as well. So it gives you a good uh, mobile view. Um, so yeah, that's that that's the UI. It gives you the workloads. Um, it when you click on workloads it again tells you what all workloads are there what all events are there uh the pods and and stuff um the i have raised the issue with the, the apply so like if i if i do like api version v1 i think i can view the docs as well uh let me see and kind pod it should give me some docs yeah so it, it gives you the docs so like api version if it is what it is uh kind uh what does you mean by kind in the spec section what all things you can um apply so i think it's not a very very big feature but yeah it's helpful for learning so if you, it, it gives you the docs kind of stuff as well and yeah you can again filter by namespace I think uh, the cluster it it doesn't help you with the multi cluster management. So you have to have like schooner for each of the thing. Uh, multi cluster management is very easily done by lens. So this is lens, and you can see I already have one and two clusters. So this is one cluster, this is two cluster, and it's very easy to add more clusters. So let's go to one of the clusters. Uh, so this is a cluster, and it gives you a very fancy view. So now this is. I told you it's heavy, but it gives you very, very uh, rich features as well. So it gives you like CPU usage request with good graphs. Uh, when you go to node, it gives you the node uh, memory, CPU version, age, health, all that stuff. Uh, it gives you the workload overview. If anything is down, not down, all that stuff. Again, pods, you can go inside a pod and you, you can see on the right hand side, it's view, it's memory, a network file system and on the top right, if you see, you can immediately get a pod shell. So if you see, you'll get a pod shell. And again, if I click here, you can edit it on the fly. And you can see, you can edit it pretty pretty easily. And then you can also get the pod logs. So you can see, it's pretty neat. So it's, it gives you all the, all the stuff. You can delete, edit. And this is the um, all the other information like summary view, CPU memory, memory file system. Uh, what are the volumes, if any, attached? What are the events, if any, are there? And then again, same with the deployments. Deployment will lead to uh, like you know what all things are there. Is it available? Uh, what all replicas are there in that? And what all pods are there? And within this also, you can redirect. You can go to the pod view so from deployment you can again switch back to the uh, pod view on the on the right main window which is there then again with the daemon set and same you can have it uh, so it has the networks as well like uh, the services and stuff so what we'll do is let's create a pod because i want to show you the port forwarding thing because that's that's pretty neat so kubectl run, run nginx hyphen hyphen image nginx pod is created kubectl expose nginx uh sorry pod nginx code 80 and it's exposed so here we'll see somewhere nginx yeah here it is so now i click on this service and i can see the book forward here 
So I click on forward. It says directly listen to any random port on localhost and open it in browser. I click on start. It will automatically open uh, the browser and welcome to Nginx. So that's how simple it is. And it will keep on running it. You can stop um, as well. So you can stop and remove the port forward. It will stop doing that. And you get a complete terminal over here. So you don't have to switch to your max terminal or whatever uh, machine you are using within the lens application itself so you stay over here you can do all the kubectl you know uh, all the run all the kubectl get uh, nodes command like again if you want to do that uh, rest of the things like you will already have like services endpoints ingress network policies port forwarding you can have from the above service you can keep that fluid um, a workflow over there access control it gives you like list of all the access control crd view it also gives you the custom resource definition so you can see all the custom resource definitions that are deployed onto the cluster and yeah uh, it's, it's pretty neat and it also gives you like complete events view like what all events have been there so you can have the events uh, by namespace by you know by all the other um, what you call filters storage classes you, you have CO volume which always be be there and then persistent volume there's nothing i believe so so there'll be nothing okay then switching between the clusters so this is one cluster this is the another cluster i go over here i can see and interact with its own cluster so i think that's pretty neat and it automatically loads your cube config file so these are the clusters that i added manually uh from cube config but if you just you know install lens uh, you will get the complete out of the box, um, whatever clusters are there, context are there in your cube config file, they'll automatically be captured and loaded. Um, and you can see that, I believe. So if we go to the settings, if we go to the settings, we can actually see the account, no, not here, uh, yeah, preferences, sorry. So you can see um, in Kubernetes from which directory it will take all the stuff. So you can see this particular thing is taking from this, what all sync I want to do and all that stuff. Tell it, uh, even the terminal, which terminal I want to use. So I think there's small, small features, but yeah, it is feature rich. Like there are lots and lots of features in, uh, in Lens. That's why it's heavy. So what, what all we have covered? Schooner, what is left? Yeah, headlamp is left. So the last one is headlamp. Uh, like I told you, I, I like this is the kind of minimalistic UI uh, with, with all the things. We can actually add, um, you know, the deployment and stuff from here as well. So this is, and it also provides documentation, but somehow it is not loading, which is fine. And it gives you the uh, cluster view, cluster usage, again, same kind of information in a different view, which is there. And it has the plugin system as well that you can, uh, develop so it has a plugin support and you can switch between your views from here itself like the dark mode and light mode whatever is there and you here you can go to the services you can again the same kind of things will be there so that's why in the slides i mentioned some of the differences between each of them so that you know uh, how and where in which particular use case you can do this particular use case you can customize it using your plugins you don't have to maintain a fork uh, in Schooner, you uh, you have different set of features which are there, which are not there, like OIDC native support and all that stuff. Lens, again, is desktop application, so that's changed the whole scene. And the multi-cluster management, it's very easy. Uh, again, Kubernetes dashboard is, is regular, fairly simplistic, so you can use that if you like. And yeah, that's kind of pretty much it that um, I had. Uh, probably, yeah, I can share one more thing. So uh, there is another tool, which I haven't mentioned in my talk description, like I, I would discuss, but there's another, which is K9S. So you can have K9S. That's actually a CLI uh, kind of thing. So it's it's a CLI kind of thing, which is there. And, uh, you know, um, I can switch um, here. I can search for like deployment and it will give me the deployment. Obviously, it's not there in uh, the default namespace but if I, if I click on um, zero then obviously it will be all namespace so this is more of a cli kind of so who are the cli fans they can you know have all these um things and you can like press enter go inside press enter go inside 
and uh, you know uh, have logs and all that stuff so that's what canines is so again it's a desktop based so it's a cli that you install you press canines set the cube config and you'll be able to um view your cluster information from the cli so okay canines is also very popular in the developer community um now two other which i haven't discussed uh, so portainer also gives you the dashboard uh portainer also gives you like you know all the views all the fancy stuff but i'm not covering portainer because we have uh you know adolfo where he will be covering portainer so that's why i have skipped that um so there are tools that gives you more power than the dashboard so these are just the plain kubernetes dashboards but there are heavy lifting tools mm -hmm. like rancher portainer that gives you the dashboard plus on top of that additional functionalities launching clusters and all those stuff which you cannot do from these uh, uis and dashboards so i hope you got a gist of kubernetes dashboards why they are important what are some of the kubernetes dashboards available open source that you can actually use and see which one fits uh, to your eyes and you know your needs